Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsland and heard the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 23rd of October. PM Modi urges for global reforms, talks on expansion at BRICS summit. Pakistan selects top judge under new process criticized by main opposition party. And Bangladesh to bar ousted ex-PM Hasina's Awami League from political participation. And now for all the details. Leaders and representatives of BRICS member countries gathered on Wednesday in Russia's Kazan to participate in the 16th BRICS summit. Speaking during the leaders' meet, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said India is ready to welcome new countries as BRICS partners, decision of which should be made unanimously. He also called for reforms in global institutions and said the bloc should set an example for the entire world and raise voices unanimously for such reforms. PM Modi added the grouping should cooperate strongly to deal with terrorism and terror funding. We support dialogue and diplomacy, not war, he added. BRICS was formed 15 years ago by Brazil, Russia, India, China and has expanded to include South Africa, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran and the United Arab Emirates. Meanwhile, PM Modi also met Chinese President Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the BRICS summit. The meeting was the first in five years and the first since 2020 when Thais nosedived after their forces clashed in Galwan Valley. The meeting also came days after both countries reached a patrolling deal to end a four-year military standoff, paving the way for improved political and business ties between the Asian giants. Moving on. Pakistan's President Asif Ali Zardari on Wednesday approved the selection of Justice Yaha Afridi as the next Chief Justice, who was chosen through a new process that critics say is designed to undermine judicial independence. Justice Afridi was picked by a parliamentary panel following a constitutional amendment that changed the way the top judge is appointed. Afridi, the third most senior judge, will replace the outgoing Chief Justice who retires on Friday for a three-year term. Previously, the most senior judge after the Chief Justice automatically became top judge. But the government and its allies amended the selection process in a hurried session of parliament earlier this week. The new process has been opposed by opposition PTI, which says it's an attempt to subvert judicial independence. The objections are likely to be backed by some senior lawyers who have opposed the new appointment process. Meanwhile, massive demonstrations were held by political activists in POJK this week against the Pakistani invasion of the territory 77 years ago, which led to mass plunder and killings. The protesters blamed people in the region still continue to suffer discrimination and are denied basic fundamental rights. Members of the United Kashmir People's National Party and Jammu Kashmir National Students Federation held massive protests in POJK this week to condemn the tribal invasion of the region backed by Pakistan Army on October 22, 1947, which brought in its wake horrifying stories of mass plunder and killings. People in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir have over the years blamed that they are denied basic fundamental rights and are beaten out with severe brutality for voicing their concerns. The protests on Tuesday also witnessed crackdown by security forces and arrests to muzzle dissent. The protesters raised concern that their natural resources are plundered by Pakistan, while the stooge government in the region only helps Islamabad fill its treasuries with no welfare policies and development for them. A demonstration was also held by UK PNP activists outside the Pakistani consulate in London. Locals in POJK have long accused they have been at the receiving end of the discriminatory policies of Islamabad that has failed to provide even basic facilities to them. Nearly 10 days have passed since the first deadly shooting by Iranian border forces and Afghan migrants and five days since the second incident, yet the fact-finding team from Taliban has not made any findings. Taliban spokesperson Zabihullah Mujahid said that the distance from the incident location is the region for the prolonged investigations. He informed that the delegation is visiting three borders and the investigation is ongoing. 
The first shooting reportedly resulted in around 260 casualties, according to Halwash. The second shooting occurred on October 17. Iran has denied any such incidents. Afghanistan's neighbor Iran and Pakistan have both deported thousands of Afghans back to their homelands since the Taliban seized power in Kabul three years back. Bangladesh is set to bar ousted Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's Awami League party and other like-minded parties from political participation in the country. Mehfuz Alam, special assistant to Chief Advisor Muhammad Yunus on Tuesday said that Hasina's political party will likely face administrative and legal roadblocks on its involvement in political activities. Yunus held a meeting with 10 political parties which reportedly demanded ban on Awami League's participation in the upcoming national elections. In the elections held in January, Hasina emerged victorious for the fourth consecutive time, breaking all records in the country's electoral history. The Dhaka High Court in September dismissed a writ petition seeking ban on the Awami League and cancellation of its registration for its alleged involvement in the killings of students and general people during the student-led mass upsurge. Nepali teenager Nima Rinji Sherpa is the youngest person ever to scale all 14 of the world's tallest peaks. And he now wants to use his skills to benefit his community. Members of the ethnic Sherpa community live mainly in the vicinity of the Mount Everest. They are known for their ability to climb, which makes them the backbone of mountain expeditions. Now I have the... Their vast skills range from fixing ropes and ladders and carrying heavy loads to cooking and guiding foreign climbers. Earning from a single expedition vary from $2,500 to $16,000 or more depending on experience. But 18-year-old Nima says Sherpas should have the same privileges as Western climbers. He wants to see Sherpas as global athletes, not just guides. You know, no Sherpa we have not seen being sponsored by major big brands, you know. So I want to be one of the first guys to be sponsor and a big face of a very big brand, you know. So that globally there is an idea that Sherpa are also like elite athletes, not just guide. Nema wants to see funding and support mobilized for schools, hospitals and activities to benefit the mountain community. The son of a veteran Everest climber, Nema is just getting started. This winter, he plans to climb Nepal's Mount Manaslu, the world's eighth highest peak. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.